This is the Music History Today podcast for September 9th. On today's show, Elvis gets on Ed Sullivan, Nirvana takes one for the team, and Apple pisses off the customers by giving away a free album. Go figure. First up, though, on this date in 1926, RCA started its radio network, the National Broadcasting Company, now known as NBC. In 1946, Petula Clark started hosting the Petula Clark TV show. In 1954, Elvis Presley met Johnny Cash for the first time after Elvis's concert at a Memphis shopping mall. In 1955, Seaberg introduced a jukebox that could play over 100 record singles and EPs. In 1956, Elvis Presley went on the Ed Sullivan TV show for the very first time. Ed was not the host that night, though, as Ed was sick. Charles Lawton did hosting duties that night, but even without Ed being there, it led to helping mainstream America accept both Elvis and rock and roll music. In 1971, John Lennon appeared on the Dick Cavett television show with Yoko Ono. In 1975, the television show Welcome Back, Cotter, whose theme song by John Sebastian of the Love and Spoonful went to number one on the singles chart, premiered on ABC television. The show also made John Travolta, who played Vinnie Barbarino, into a television star, and then he became a mega film star by doing Saturday Night Fever, Grease, and Urban Cowboy. In 1975, same day, Paul McCartney and Wings started their Wings Over the World tour. In 1979, music promoter Sid Bernstein offered the Beatles $500 million to reunite. They still said no. For $500 million. Jeez, for $500 million, I would have at least walked into a place. I'm just saying. Anyway. In 1994, a riot broke out during a free concert given by Green Day in Boston, Massachusetts. Police ended the concert after about 15 minutes. In 1995, the group Kaios played together for the final time. Also in 1995, China Phillips of Wilson Phillips married actor William Baldwin. In 2004, Joey Fatone of NSYNC married his wife Kelly Baldwin. No relation. In 2005, Liverpool, England city government voted to demolish Ringo Starr's home where he was born. In 2007, the Farm Aid 20 concert took place in New York City. And on that same day, country music artist Joe Nichols married his wife Heather Singleton and Donnie and Marie Osmond began their residency at the Flamingo Hotel and Casino in Las Vegas, Nevada. What was supposed to be a six-week residency became 11 years. In 2014, Apple gave away the new U2 album Songs of Innocence on its iTunes service. People were not really thrilled about it because it was put on their devices without permission. And in 2019, Kelly Clarkson debuted her television talk show, The Kelly Clarkson Show. In theater, in 1950, the Broadway show Texas closed. Also in 1950, the Broadway show Little Darling closed. And also on that same day, the Broadway show Where's Chartev closed. In award ceremonies that were held on September 9th, in 1992, Howard Stern premiered his Fart Man character with 90210's Luke Perry on the MTV Video Music Awards. Also, it was a ceremony where Axl Rose of Guns N' Roses threatened Kurt Cobain of Nirvana and also where Chris Novoselic took a guitar to the head after throwing it up in the air during Nirvana's performance. In 1999, Lauryn Hill and Will Smith ruled at the MTV Video Music Awards. And in 2007, Justin Timberlake, Rihanna with Jay-Z, and Fergie were the big winners at the MTV Video Music Awards. No one cared, though, because during the ceremony, Kid Rock got into a fight with Tommy Lee of Motley Crue. The night is also remembered for a Britney Spears opening number that showed her declining mental state at the time as she performed appearing confused. 
Albums that were released on September 9th include, in 1963, Marvin Gaye released Recorded Live on Stage. In 1966, Manfred Mann released Man Made Hits. In 1969, Fleetwood Mac released Then Play On. In 1971, John Lennon released Imagine and Aretha Franklin released Aretha's Greatest Hits. In 1974, John Sebastian released Tarzana Kid. In 1981, Billy Joel released Songs in the Attic. In 1982, Rush released Signals. In 1985, Dexy's Midnight Runners released Don't Stand Me Down. In 1987, Love and Rockets released Earth, Sun, Moon. In 1990, Jimmy Barnes released Two Fires. In 1991, Dire Straits released On Every Street and Cross released Blue Rock. In 1996, The Cardigans released First Band on the Moon, Catherine Wheel released Like Cats and Dogs, and Natalie Cole released Stardust. In 1997, Whitesnake released Starkers in Tokyo, Incubus released S-C-I-E-N-C-E, better known as Science, and Amy Grant released Behind the Eyes. In 1998, Frank Black and the Catholics released their self-titled album. In 2003, John Mayer released Heavier Things, and three years later, in 2006, he released Continuum. In 2008, Natalie Cole released Still Unforgettable. In 2011, Ed Sheeran released his debut album, Plus. And in 2014, U2 released Songs of Innocence, as we mentioned earlier. Singles that were released on September 9th in the UK include in 1964 when Peter and Gordon released I Don't Want to See You Again. Meanwhile in America, in 1966, Gary Lewis and the Playboys released Paint Me a Picture. In 1969, Aretha Franklin released Today I Sing the Blues. In 1977, The Carpenters released Calling Occupants of Interplanetary Craft. In 1978, The Rolling Stones released Beast of Burden, and Rick James released Mary Jane. In 1981, Genesis released No Reply at All. In 1988, Chicago released Look Away. In 1994, The Stone Temple Pilots released Interstate Love Song, and in 2008, Katy Perry released Hot and Cold. Before we go any further, we'd like to tell you that there is now a Music History In-Depth podcast where we go more in-depth on a few of the events that happen in music history for that particular week. The Music History In-Depth podcast runs every Tuesday on YouTube or wherever you get your podcast from, as does our Music Halls of Fame podcast, which talks about a member of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame along with other Music Halls of Fame, museums, and walks of fame. The Music Halls of Fame podcast drops every Thursday and can also be found on YouTube or wherever you get your podcasts. Now, back to this podcast. Artists who were born on September 9th include the legendary Rock and Roll Hall of Fame singer Mr. Otis Redding, also DJ Afrojack, singer Alex B., Doug Dingle of Iron Butterfly, rapper Dre of Das FX, Dave Stewart of The Eurythmics, John McPhee of The Doobie Brothers, Freddie Weller of Paul Revere and the Raiders, singer Inez Fox, Trevor Leslie Oaks of Shawadi Wadi, Christian music singer Lauren Daigle, country music singer Hunter Hayes, rapper Moray, singer and actor Tom Wopat, Magnus Larson of Lucas Graham, singer Haley Reinhardt, drummer John Blackwell, who played with Prince, Bruce Palmer of Buffalo Springfield, singer D.D. D. Sharp, Luther Simmons of The Main Ingredient, singer Michael Buble, rapper Soldier Slim, Jim Keys of The Master's Apprentices, singer Duffy Power, Joe Negroni of Frankie Lyman and the Teenagers, Jake Carey of The Flamingos, bassist George Mraz, saxophonist Larry Stabbins, saxophonist Bezignu Namaslowski, Guitarist Manuel Gottsching of Ash Ra Temple. Bassist Z. Eduardo. Kate Barker of Girls Authority. Jazz trumpet player Fred Stone. Singer Paul Durham of Black Lab. Saxophonist Walter Benton. Jazz percussionist Elvin Jones. Pianist George Maycock. And trombonist Earl Humphrey. Artists who unfortunately passed away on September 9th include composer Bernard Klein, who passed away in 1832 at the age of 39. 
Composer Jacobo Fitcher passed away in 1878 at the age of 18. Composer Cecil Gray passed away in 1951 at the age of 56. Composer Alfred Gradstein passed away in 1954 at the age of 49. Composer Ettore Pozzoli passed away in 1957 at the age of 84. Composer Charles O'Neill passed away in 1964 at the age of 82. Composer Antonio Massana passed away in 1966 at the age of 76. The singer for the Count Basie Orchestra and also the Harry James Orchestra, Helen Humes, passed away from cancer in 1981 at the age of 68. The conductor of the Winnipeg Symphony from 1948 to 1957, Mr. Walter Kaufman, passed away in 1984 at the age of 77. The singer with the Jimmy Dorsey Orchestra, Miss Helen O'Connell, passed away in 1993 at the age of 74. Musician Ida Carroll passed away in 1995 at the age of 89. The father of bluegrass, Mr. Bill Monroe, passed away in 1996 at the age of 84. Singer Lucio Battisti passed away from cancer in 1998 at the age of 55. Peter Tadero of the T-Set passed away in 2002 from cancer at the age of 55. The co-founder of the West Coast Pop Experimental Art Band, Mr. Bob Markley, passed away in 2003 at the age of 68. The musician and businessman who pioneered the development of guitar products, Mr. Ernie Ball, passed away in 2004 at the age of 74. Country music singer Skeeter Davis passed away in 2004 at the age of 72. Composer Richard Burmer passed away in 2006 at the age of 50. Huey Thomason of the group The Outlaws passed away in 2007 at the age of 55. Pianist Becky Zaleku passed away in 2008 at the age of 53. Rob Young of Primal Scream passed away in 2014 at the age of 49. Singer Ferozo Begum passed away in 2014 at the age of 84. Guitarist Robin McDonald of Billy J. Kramer and the Dakotas passed away in 2015 at the age of 72. And Ronald Cool Bell of Cool and the Gang passed away in 2020 at the age of 68. Next on the Music History Today podcast, it is September 10th, when in 1991... Nirvana released the single Smells Like Teen Spirit and gave birth in the mainstream, at least, to grunge music. 